put yours down. Now, Alex is here to talk transitioning from the rental to the sales market and what making that jump really looks like. So, um, Alex, welcome. Why should folks care about this? While Nancy just spent 30 minutes telling all of you that it is a buyer's market, right? Prices are, are at all-time lows, inventories at all-time highs, days on market, all-time highs. You want to be working with buyers. It is a buyer's market. You're going to make lots of money. Uh, there are lots of apartments that are going to come to market over the next three months. Uh, the market's been essentially frozen. I mean, uh, it's a dark picture that Nancy painted, but let's be honest here. None of us have been able to show property. How can deals get done when you can't show a property? It can't. So this summer is gonna be the busiest summer. And if you guys are not working with buyers, now's the time to, to jump on. There you go. Um, so, you know, if I'm an agent, you know, currently working only in rentals, what does it take? Alex, be clear with me. You know, what does it take to get that first buyer, that first listing, talk me through how it goes. Absolutely. So real estate is a very interesting profession because a lot of times your first clients are the people that you know personally. So my first buyer was a friend of mine that I used to work with at a different sales job. And I had been in real estate for a few years and I put it on social media and I was letting everyone know, reaching out to people. And, uh, you know, five years ago, he reached out to me and he said, hey, you do real estate or something? And I said, yeah, I'm a real estate broker. I've been doing real estate for a number of years. Did you not know this? And he said, I guess I didn't. Uh, I was working with this broker and, you know, he's not responsive. I don't think he cares about me. He works with a lot of two, three, ten million dollar buyers. And I'm just buying a million dollar apartment. Can you help me? And I said, yes, I can help you. Of course I can help you. And literally one week later, the exact property that he wanted came to market and we were in contract in like two or three weeks. It was literally the easiest deal I've ever done. Uh, but no, I found that no deal is really easy. And that first time home buyer, as anyone who works with buyers know, it can be such an emotional experience. And to have that experience with one of my closest friends uh, was very intense, but you learn a lot. Uh, something else I would say to young agents, if they may not have a network of friends that can buy million dollar homes, what they may want to do is partner with a senior agent, someone who has a big book of business, someone that has a lot of clients and cannot service the listings, cannot service the buyers. A year and a half ago, I teamed up with Martin Iden. Uh, he's a pro, he's been in the business over 20 years. And together, we can help deliver knowledge, data, information, really help guide our clients. And there's a lot of collaboration that, that helps us get deals done and also help us deliver for our clients. That's great. That's, that's a wonderful tip. I think you said something when we were talking about having this discussion the other day, um, you said brand yourself, not as a salesperson, but as an advisor. And I love that one because it speaks to the notion of relationship management, but more importantly, providing value. Absolutely. You know, I look at each person as a relationship, not as a transaction. You know, the brokerage community does not necessarily have the best reputation. And it's because consumers have had really negative experiences. Me personally, I never pressure anyone. I never push anyone. Me as a trusted advisor, my job is to give information. My job is to give data. My job is to make introductions to other service providers mortgage lenders, real estate attorneys. You know, my job is to handhold. My job is to be there for my client and act in their best interest. Not about a commission check. It's not like, oh, you should buy the $3 million place instead of the one point bought, you know? No, what is best for them? And if you take care of your clients, even if they're renters, they're gonna refer business to you. They're gonna, they're gonna call you when they're looking to buy. And if you can, if you can keep a client for life, They'll be a renter, they'll be a buyer, they'll be a seller, they'll, you'll help them buy their second home, you know, you'll help their kids buy homes. I mean, that's the benefit of this career is that over time it builds like a snowball and in 20 years you can be making monster money. Well, that's great to hear for everyone on the line. Um, so what, 
you're talking a lot about long-term stuff, and I think that's really important. Oh, friends. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Yeah. Need coffee. <laughs> I mean, can't knock Starbucks. Um, one thing that I want to talk about is everyone listening right now wants to know what they can do right now. So they can think about their long-term plan, but what can they do in this moment today that can move their business in the right direction to hit all of those things that you're talking about in the future? Well, I think everyone that is listening in on this call is doing exactly what they need to be doing. Taking advantage of this time to become more knowledgeable, more informed. You should be on every webinar that you get an email about. You should listen to every podcast about real estate. You should be on The Real Deal and on the Street Easy blog and on Miller Samuel and Urban Diggs. Listening, consuming, you know, watching the listings that are coming out there. Be in tune to the market. That way, when you see something that looks unbelievable, you can send it to one of your buyers. You can share it on Facebook and say, look, guys, this is a deal of a lifetime, you know? Be informed, use this time. I get it, we can't show, it's terrible. But you can invest in yourself and make yourself a more proficient expert agent. So when you can show, you look really good. I love that, great. So everyone on the line, gold star, you're already doing it. Do more of it, I guess is the takeaway, love that. Uh, all right, so let's go back in time a little bit. You're a new agent in one of the most competitive markets in the world. What's one piece of advice you wish you had had before you started on this journey? Uh, can I give you a couple of pieces? Is that, is that okay? Yes, you can. We've got the time. Okay, good. Uh, number one, you don't have to work with nasty clients. You know, I, I had a gentleman about three years ago just be so unduly nasty to me. And I didn't do anything wrong, you know? And for an hour, I just listened to him you know, berate me. And I thought that I had to take it because he's my client. But things ended up not working out. And recently, a few months ago, I had a very similar, just nasty client. And again, things didn't work out. And my takeaway is you don't have to say yes to every piece of business that comes your way, especially if someone's being nasty, especially if someone wants you to act in an unethical or immoral way. Thank you, but no thank you. Good luck to you. You know, that's big. Uh, and number two, you know, I think a lot of people think there's some kind of secret recipe to success, and there really isn't. And I've lived on uh, my favorite quote, it's, a, it's become a mantra of mine, and it's from Colin Powell, and it's really simple. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. So if you do that, if you prepare, if you study the market, study neighborhoods and listings and study where things close and you're on every webinar and you're, you're hearing about how we're doing closings and how they're doing appraisals and you can advise and educate your clients, they're going to work with you forever and you're going to get deals done, you know? And, and, and when you mess up, learn from that failure. You know what? I should have I should have put the square footage on there. I should have put the view picture first, and that would have got the home to sell faster. We're constantly learning. We're never going to be perfect. The goal is to be a little bit less wrong every day. A little less wrong every day. I, I can do that. I'll take that one. That works in my world. Yeah. It works in everyone's world. Um, all right, so, so now let's go back to present day. You know, here we are, it's the age of COVID. Um, and in that, in this strange time, many agents are saying that there are just no deals to be had. Have you found that to be true? Um, you know, another way to say this is, have agents been on pause along with New York City? Yes, they have. You know, uh, from I think mid-March until now, there's been about 500 deals that were signed. Normally, it's something like 2,500. So there's a lot of business that has just essentially disappeared, but that's being pushed until later in the year. Because if people wanted to buy or sell, most likely they still want to do that. It's just going to be a, a little bit later, you know? And you've got some, some stories around how you've been, how you've been doing deals during COVID. Yes. So, have advice for staying nimble and being creative? Yeah, so a lot of those deals, those 500 deals that have happened over the past three months, let's say, 
A lot of them started pre-COVID. I brought a property to the market early March. I was able to do two open houses. The first open house had 30 people. The second open house had two because that was the day that the city shut down. But I still got an offer. It was accepted. And then literally for eight weeks, the buyer delayed signing the contract. I checked in every week. Hey, what's going on? You know, it was always a different excuse, but I felt that the buyer was scared. The world was very scary, you know? I'm actually glad the market was frozen because I think a lot of people would have made decisions based off of panic. If anyone here uh, watches the stock market, you know, mid-March until the beginning of April was a free fall. And if you were selling during that time, you lost a lot of money because the market went right back up. So, you know, Nancy mentioned that we're at all time lows. If anyone here is a fan of Warren Buffett, he has a great saying, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Do you want to be working with a buyer at a market top? Is that a great time to be buying? Or do you want to tell them now is when you're going to get a deal, a deal of a lifetime? And you're not going to you know, buy it to flip it in a year. You're probably going to live there for five to 10 years. So now the time to buy, you know, uh, we've done some polls here about virtual assets and would you buy a property based off of video alone or a Matterport alone? No, no one's going to spend a million dollars without touching the property, without seeing it in person. But all of that is helpful to get deals done. You know, some agents might say, I won't be able to show. How will I get deals done? Remember when you used to run to the property? You know, get there early, prepare the whole home, turn on the lights, wear your best, and then the client walks in, and, and within five seconds they go, I don't like it, and they walk out. And how many hours have you wasted just for that one appointment? Now, you'll send them a video, you'll confirm that they saw that video, if they have any questions, you'll, you'll send them the Matterport, you'll do a Zoom call, you know, to make sure they get the property, you'll ask for a pre-approval before you even show it so you'll know that they're qualified. You know, so we may end up actually doing less work. You know, that's the thing. We are at a great crossroads where technological innovation is going to make us more efficient, better agents, and the consumer will benefit. So, yes, COVID-19, woe is me. How can I get deals done? I get deals done by being the smartest, best agent that I can and really being a trusted advisor to my clients. Uh, that's wonderful advice. I love the line that technological innovation is actually helping us move forward here. It's helping us work more efficiently. Um, and very in inspiring thing for folks who are feeling like what used to work great is no longer working and that's not any fault of my own. The, the environment changed around me. What do I do? You know, take advantage of the technological resources around you and take advantage of um, all of the resources and all of the ways to improve on yourself, you know, during this time when you, when you can't show up. So well said. Um, one topic here, so many agents are incorporating rentals into their overall strategy, you know, when they were previously focusing more on sales, um, but in this slowdown, you know, is it a good strategy to, to double down on rentals right now? Absolutely. So there's going to be a subset of people who don't want to buy. They're scared. Market's coming down. They don't listen to Warren Buffett. They'll want to take a wait and see approach. They don't want to leave New York because they love this city greatest city in the world. So they'll want to rent for a year. Now, if you give that renter an amazing experience, they'll never forget it. So over the past two years, I've had three renters become buyers. One renter is spending $3 million on property. Okay. Another renter bought a $1.2 million apartment. Another renter bought a $740,000 apartment. After they bought it, they needed to leave New York suddenly and I got to rent it. All right. And that, you know, the, 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 the landlords of those properties that I took the rental on to begin with, again, the, the client was the, the tenant wasn't my client. I was representing the landlord, but because I gave the client, the tenant, such a superlative experience when they wanted to buy, I was their guy, you know? So all of the agents listening here, if there's one thing that you take from me today is you are in a service based industry. Every person that touches you should leave better than when they met you. They should be like, wow, that person was awesome. They really knew their stuff. They were really nice. They were professional. 
and they had my best interest in mind. This business is not rocket science, but if you're if it's about what's in it for me, you'll never succeed. But leverage those renters, leverage those landlord relationships, because if you're renting out a co-op or a condo or a townhouse, eventually that owner becomes a seller, you know, and then you know it, it's the sky's the limit. So I know some agents are like, I don't do rentals. Uh, if it's a rental over three thousand dollars, you call me, okay. Uh, I will take your referral business, okay? <laughs> Good to know. You heard it here first. Throw, throw some business out. You can follow me on Instagram at Alex will be the Super Broker. Um, is there ever a reason to turn down that business? You know, a rental comes along. You ever going to say no to it? So I think the only time you say no to business is if you can't service it properly. So if it's a property type that you're not really familiar with, if it's a neighborhood that you're not really comfortable with, it's better to refer that business to a top agent that gets it. And you know, there might be the opportunity where you partner on the listing or with the client, you know, that you're involved and communicative and, and giving feedback, but it's usually best just to let the, the pro handle it. That being said, I will say there was a time uh, about two years ago where I was gonna get a co-op rental and brokers who are listening know that co-ops are tons of work, uh, gobs and gobs of paperwork and fees. I mean, it can be a nightmare. Hopefully that changes because of COVID. And uh, it was $2,600 and like maybe I was gonna make a $2,000 fee. And I said to my colleague, should I take this $2,600 rental? And he was like, of course, are you crazy? So I did. And I got a, a one month fee from there. And then that renter became a buyer and then I rented the apartment again and now we're going to sell it, you know? So if I had said no to that rental listing, I would have lost four deals. That's crazy. That's Don't crazy. Say no to business that you can take care of and take care of well. You never know the gold mine that they're sitting on in those, in those little co-op well, rentals. But again, I think you can create that gold mine if you're giving that service again if i was like rah, whatever you know rah, rah, i like i give the renter a thank you note and a gift you know i went out of my way to make sure that he felt respected cared for you know again this is not rocket science treat people well and they will eat nails for you as a saying wow let's hope it doesn't come to that <laughs> let's hope so I am about to switch to audience Q&A here because we've got so many, but I'd love to close on one last question. What are your recommendations for um, resources that, that folks should be taking advantage of? Any particular books or influencers that helped you along your career path that you want to pass along? Great question. One of the best books I've ever read is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Uh, maybe one of the best books of all time. It'll just give you a lot of information about how you can just manage life, right? Uh, and I have some show and tell, how to win cool. friends and influence people. You know, the Bible business book. You have to read this if you haven't. Read it uh, and you'll be a pro like me. And then this other book, The Go-Giver. This is a, like a story. It's written like a parable about business. But if you read this book, you will fully understand how I approach my business, how I deal with clients. Uh, you can read it in a day. It reads so fast and it's easy. Um, some other resources that I think are great, absolutely everything that Street Easy does um, yeah. on the web, like daily blogs, articles. Uh, they do like a roundup, like top five with outdoor space and stuff like that. It's really helpful. Uh, but I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I got to shout him out, Noah Rosenblatt of Urban Digs. The guy's phenomenal. He's putting a lot of great content out there, podcast. Uh, Miller Samuel, he has this amazing newsletter. The guy loves graphs. He's been in real estate 30 years, so his perspective is just super helpful. Uh, and I like Tony Robbins. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm a positive guy. Say yes. You know, I try to give 110% in every situation. And, uh, you know, Taking in from those people, being inspired by those people will, will help you get through very tough times. Awesome. Oh, you know what? And also, what, can, I, can, I, can I shout out? I have an event tomorrow at 1 oh, p.m. with a life coach, Stephanie Bershow. Uh, it's, it's from 1 p.m. to 1.30 on our Facebook, the Martin Iden team Facebook page. And it's all about 
wading out of pandemic and making 2020 our best year yet. Inspiring. Love that. And that's tomorrow? That's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Awesome. All right. Well, we're getting a ton of questions about uh, where folks can get links to all these resources. So I will follow up with you after this. And in the recap blog post where we share the recording, we'll link to a, a few of those. So. Okay, great. Thank you. On the line. Uh, let's get to some questions here. First one up. Any tips on teaming up with other brokers in terms of splits, compensation, et cetera? You know, like I would say to a, a client of mine, you should shop around, have conversations with different brokers and see what they want to offer you. And then no, just because they offered you, just like doing a deal doesn't mean you can't counter, you know, see what the best deal that you can get is and then take that deal. But also understand that it's not necessarily just about the money. It's about that relationship. What are you getting in exchange for being on that team? Are they just using you and, and having you run around uh, and they pay you nothing? Or are they available to give you mentorship, to help you, to help guide you on your deals, to give you market intel and just help you become a better agent? That's a special opportunity. Kind of a first opportunity for a good negotiation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Before we go external. Um, I've got a question from someone who says, I'm brand new to this. I started in February of this year and I haven't seen a dime. Do I give up? That's a really, really, really tough question. You know, it's very possible that the next three, three to six months could still be tough for a young new agent. Um, what I would say is if you love real estate, if you love people, if you believe in yourself, stick with it. If you work hard, stay positive. I promise you good things will happen. I just don't know exactly when. All right. So it's, if you run out of money, you got to quit the biz, you know, so be it. But uh, there might be an opportunity for you to team up with that senior agent and then get a little bit of money. Maybe they can give you a stipend or something. You're getting the reps, you're learning, and then eventually you'll get a couple of deals and that should see you through. But this is a tough time, but we're all going to get through it. I promise you. That's, that's great advice. Someone wants to know what you eat for breakfast. Uh, that's so funny. You know, I recently took a personality uh, test and I'm just a high energy person who loves life. And I, uh, the, the personality test told me that my type loves personal development, loves helping other people. Uh, so I'm definitely in the right business. And, uh, you know, coming on this call, it's kind of weird to give competitors, you know, my competition tips and advice. But I think if all of us can raise the level of service of this industry, you know, a lot of times people are like, he's such a broker. Imagine if when they said that, it meant that you were an amazing, kind, smart, fun guy or woman, you know? He's such a broker. Oh, wow, you're going to marry him? You know, like that kind of thing. Like, you know, so what do I eat for breakfast today? I had some coffee and I had a muffin. So not <laughs> that great, actually about what's in here i love that be be the broker that other brokers want to be that's very empowering and inspiring um let, i'm just scrolling through here sorry guys i've got a command center going with all your questions um lots of questions about the books so we'll follow up on those um lots of compliments on your positivity alex so thank you so much for bringing that positive energy here today Thank you again, Nancy, as well. Thank you for bringing the data. Alex, thank you for bringing the heart and the experience and the peer discussion. Um, a couple reminders before we hop off today. I just want to let everyone know, thank you again for staying for the duration of the webinar. When this ends, the survey will come up. Make sure you take that survey and then you will receive an email from Street Easy about that gift and or donation. And um, that is yours to do with what you, what you see fit. So before we meet again, stay safe, be well, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much.